Hello everyone, my name is Jason Hill, and today we're going to be sculpting this crazy demon guy, uh, demon hippo guy, based on this sketch by Anthony Jones, our guest commentator. Anthony, why don't you introduce yourself? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm giggling from what I said earlier. <laughs> Anyways, um, hello, my name is Anthony Jones. I am a senior concept artist over at Sony Santa Monica. The makers of God of War. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> there you go. That, that's how you pronounce God of War. <laughs> All right. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. So why don't you uh, why don't you talk a little bit about um, maybe what you do or your job entails on a daily basis now, and uh, what spurred you to get into the industry and how you got to where you're at right now, if you wanted to. All right. Um, so <clears throat> I guess I'll, I'll just start off with like a brief history of my art life. I, I pretty much went into the uh, to school like make, wanted to make video games. So at first I was a programmer because I was I'm I'm half Korean, so I'm like you know it's natural <laughs> well, ability. Yeah, I already ability. got an edge. Yeah, I, I already, yeah, already got an edge on most of the <laughs> everyone else. And so like when I started, um, I thought you know I'd be a programmer. But then I was looking around and I noticed that everybody that was doing art wasn't like spectacular. They made it like this whole big deal that like. Uh, if you want to get, if you want to do art, you got to have like a portfolio and all that stuff. And I was like, oh, I don't have a portfolio. <laughs> so I just spent like, you know, like the first like few quarters just drawing like a shitload. And then, um, and once I had that, like I went in there and I showed them my art and then they were just kind of like, all right, you're in. And I only like showed them like one drawing. It's kind of like a disappointment because I did like so many drawings. <laughs> yeah. They were like, "Oh yeah, oh yeah, we'll, we'll switch you to the art program." And that I was, was like, the switch majors. In yeah. College? And so I switched to to uh, media art and design over at AI, and um, and then that's kind of when I pursued like basically concept art. Like I saw my good buddy uh, Edgar Cardona uh, paint, and that's kind of like when I realized you can do like digital painting. Mm -hmm. And it like changed my whole perception of concept art. And ever since then, I've just been doing concept art. Uh, I worked for Hasbro. I did stuff for them. And then I did um, some stuff for uh, uh, like K2, um, Big Huge Games. Just like, there's a lot of freelance like here and there. Um, and then I, I always felt that I was like capable to work on bigger stuff. And so I worked at a game company called Crazy Pixel, and then over time, like, now I'm working over here at uh, Sony Santa Monica. And so, um, when I first got in there, I was thinking, like, oh my god, this is, like, this is it. This yeah. is this is the big show. This yeah. is, like, this is everything that I've been prepping for. Mm -hmm. And when I went in there, and I was thinking that, I was like, you know, this is, this is everything that I've been training for, so I need to bring my A game. And when I was in there, like... It wasn't as hard as I anticipated. Like I was like making things like, oh man, this this is the industry. Like this is what it's about. Yeah. And it wasn't anything different than, from what I was doing. In fact, um, I drew a lot before, and so now I'm just kind of like, you know, just I just my standard of quality has changed definitely. Yeah. Like I see my uh, coworkers, and I'm like, damn, they're really good. And so the quality um, and the standard has changed. Okay. Like my my taste has changed. And so, uh, but my passion and my drive to draw a lot hasn't. Mm -hmm. And so it, it, it made me actually better working there because I was surrounded by great artists. And so I, I definitely suggest if you ever, like, work somewhere, work somewhere where people are better than you. Um, yeah. Just because, even if, if even if they don't work a lot more than you, or even if, um, you know, they may not, you know... Um, or maybe they are just really good. Um, just like being surrounded by that kind of competition yeah. makes you want to do better. Yeah. Um, not in a malicious way, but in a, in a progressive way. You want to be the best you can be just yeah. because it's just the standard there. Yeah. And you're just like, all right, I'm going to be baller. Yeah. That's just how it's going to be. Um, and uh, it's crazy. Like when you work for a bigger company too, like so much more opportunities open up just because of the namesake. Um, uh, now I teach at Red Engine and Otis because of like my networking over at uh, um, you know over at Sony. Uh, like they pretty much were like, "Hey, you're really good. Like, let's hook you up with a gig. You know, like let's see what's up." Yeah. And now I'm teaching over these schools, and it's it's kind of weird. Like it kind of flipped on me. 
it's like I went from like a student to a teacher, you know. Yeah. And um, I feel like I have a lot to talk about uh, because you know I drew a lot and I studied a lot, so I definitely have a lot to share. But uh, but yeah, I mean yeah. that's pretty much the the brief story of my career and like so what I think yeah. about it. It sounds like your career path's kind of uh, kind of snowballed or something. Like you, yeah, you yeah, worked yeah. hard, and then one thing is starting to lead to another. Yeah, like more and more. Absolutely. A lot, a lot of people ask me, like, a lot of students ask me, like, like what's the secret? Yeah, exactly. Like, everyone always thinks that there's, like, yeah. some secret yeah. thing that, like, exists in art. Like, oh, dude, like, is there, like, a render brush? Yeah. Like, <laughs> what can is I that? Have, re- can I have your brushes? Like, yeah. just yours, man, because I want to paint yeah, like, your paintings. Dude, <laughs> your, your brush must be the brush, Yeah, right? <laughs> you figured it out. You, you have changed <laughs> the way that the world works, and I'm like... No, man, like, um, or like, you know, they, they, they think that I have like a, an edge and it's really not, nothing other than I just draw a lot. Yeah. Fundamentals or something. It's just. Yeah. And I, 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 I told this one student the other day, he was like asking me, he's all, you know, like I want to be, you know, I want to be good. And he's like, he's like, how long have you been drawing? He's only been drawing like, you know, I've only been drawing like a few years, like two or three years and. So and so and then um, and I was like, well, I, I've been only really drawing for about four years, you know, and two of those years were professionally, you know, I was doing stuff for for companies, and um, I was like, what it is is just hard work, man. Yeah. Like you can't like you can't say you draw every day. Like that's not a, that's not a thing to say. Yeah. Yeah. Like and I gave an example of cross country. Like I, I used to be a runner, and I say, okay, you know, if you run like three miles a day every day. Like, you'll be okay. You're a good runner. Like, you can run. I'm sure you can outrun me now, but, like, you know, you can run, like, I'm sure you can run long distances, and if you were to race, I'm sure you can get a decent time. Um, but you're, you know, you're just a, a guy. You're just, like, a person that just runs. Yeah. You're not, like, an Olympian. Yeah. Now, and the difference between you and an Olympian is this, is that Olympian doesn't run three miles a day. They run, like, ten miles a day. Yeah. Uh, maybe they run 20 miles a day. Mm-hmm. Um, and if they're not running 20 miles a day, they're doing like intervals, like they're training, like they're like, okay, I'm not going to run long distance today, but I'm going to do like short intervals sprints and like, uh, I'm going to do that. And then not only am I going to do that, I'm going to eat right, yeah. you know, I'm going to do weightlifting because it's going to make my arms a little bit more like have the right locomotion to make me run faster. You know, I'm going to, like, swim. You're going to do things that even, like, you know, that have nothing to do with his running, but, like, in the longer scheme of things, it will. Yeah. And I was explaining, like, there's no difference between, yeah. like, that and art. Like, if you want to be good at art, you, you can't just draw, like, three miles worth of art. you got to yeah. do everything. you got to do intervals. you got to eat right. Yeah. you got to look at the right artwork. You know, you got to, like, digest the right information. You can't just, just say, I just draw all yeah. the time. And it could feel a little misleading too because in either case that you just explained, like both of those cases are people that run every day. Yeah. But it doesn't mean the same thing. It doesn't mean the same thing at all. Yeah, yeah it's it's completely different like and and that's the difference between just someone that runs and that's Olympian, like Olympic runner. Mm-hmm. You know, it's because of that. Like if you look at Kobe, like basketball, he like he's like the hardest worker in mm-hmm. that team and like there was a time where he wasn't the best basketball player. But now he is, because he just, like, worked at it. And, um, you know, Michael Jordan said the same stuff. Like, Michael Jordan said, like, I, like, failed, like, thousands of times. But it's because I failed that I know how to succeed. Mm-hmm. And it's, like, it makes sense. Like, you, you got to learn to not be afraid of failure. You're not to be afraid of, like, maybe your artwork isn't fantastic, but, you know, you're working towards it, and there's no problem if it's not perfect. It's just like, you you know it's not going to be perfect, but you're going to make it perfect eventually. And um, that's kind of like the model I've gone by. And like, if you know artists that are good, you just surround yourself with them. Ask them questions. Always, always ask questions. Yeah. Um, and question yourself. Never, never think that you've made it. Yeah. Right? Always think, question yourself. Yeah, I remember I was watching one of your older videos and you were talking about like, you know, there's never like a time where you're like, I've, I've hit it. And yeah. I made it. And it's true. Like, you just, there's no, like, I, I know artists that I look up to and I feel like they've made it. And they they don't act like it. They act like they're like, no, there's still more, like, a lot yeah. to learn. A lot to learn, yeah. There's an old master. If I get this wrong, I'll just edit it out. <laughs> <laughs> I think it was, uh, 
I think it was Da Vinci, but it could have been Michelangelo. Uh, <laughs> it's like rumored that on his deathbed, I don't know if it's true or not, but he said that on his deathbed that he was only starting to learn about art. <laughs> like, and that's just, uh, I think that's just it, what it comes with. And another thing that's really big on what you're saying about practicing so much, you know, like to be an Olympian, like some that person that runs three miles a day feels like really accomplished, feels like, you know, I'm putting in a lot of effort here, though. You know, I should be getting big returns. Even if he is getting returns that would be resulting from three miles a day, yeah. and he feels like it's not good enough, it may seem that that Olympian is going way overboard. Like, this guy just won't stop, dude. It's his whole life. Yeah. But really, it shouldn't feel that way when you're doing it. It shouldn't be like, man, I really, it has to be my whole life. Yeah. Even though, it, it, even though, it sh even though I think that's the best way that it works... It's really, really a passion thing. Even if you, even if your whole life is art, or or whatever it is that you think is important in in what you want to do, and you're working really hard, other people might tell you. You might hear other people like, "Man, I can't believe, dude, all that time. Are you serious? Like, yeah. or, man, you just keep turning stuff out. It never feels that way to you. It's just really like that's what you'd rather be doing that yeah. than anything else. You don't feel Absolutely. like you're sacrificing time or anything. It's a passion thing, I think. It's it's a lifestyle. Yeah, it's it's like the the what's the difference between the Olympian and the runner? The runner is doing it to stay in shape. Yeah, the Olympian does it because that's who they are. Yeah, it's like I'm I'm an Olympic runner. Yeah. that's what I am. Yeah. And so whenever I I tell people like I'm a concept artist, that's what I am. Like, yeah. and <clears throat> it's they, it make they make it think like or some people assume that oh well it's just you that you know you're just like over the top and I'm like. <laughs> Like, everyone I work with is like that. Yeah. Like, you don't get it. Like, not, like, you, you, some people will say, like, oh, I don't have time yeah. to do this or that. I was like, then you make time. Like, if you, if you want a job doing this, then you make time for it. Yeah. And, like, it, it's, it's like this. Everyone I work with works there full time. Uh, they either teach or they do freelance or they teach and do freelance. Like, a, my good example is my coworker, Jung Park. He, he not only does he do full-time work, he teaches over at um, Red Engine, which he owns as well, so he manages it, and he does freelance, you know, and he's, like, trying to, like, he teaches at Otis, too, so he's, like, he's doing, like, four or five things. Yeah, like, his four day, or five, like three or four part-time jobs as well as a full-time job. Yeah, and his whole day is just art, like, it's just all art. Yeah. 